Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. In order to make sure your smart contracts are secure, you're going to want to test a handful of scenarios. Unfortunately, because of the nature of blockchains, this is kind of tricky. Fortunately for developers, frameworks like Hardhat and Foundry give developers the tools to test almost any scenario they can think of. In this video, I'm going to go over a handful of these tools, or cheat codes as they're called in the Foundry framework. But first, if you're new around here, here at What the Funk, we talk about all things Web3 and building the decentralized future. If that's something that you're into, make sure to subscribe to this channel, click that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. So here you can see I've created a brand new Forge project and created a contract called Hello. Basically all this contract does is set a message and display a message. So you can see that our state variables are a string, which holds the message, a uint, which basically holds the last time that this message was updated, and an address for whoever owns this contract. When the contract is initialized, the message is set to hello, and the owner is set to whoever deployed the contract. And finally, we have a single function called setMessage, which takes a message and saves it to the message variable we have but it has a few little tricky guards here. First, it checks whether or not there's ether being sent to the contract. If there's no ether being sent to the contract, it will allow you to set a message if you are the owner of the contract. And the final check is to make sure that a day has passed since the last update to the message. And it also checks to see if last updated is zero, so you can actually set the message right after deploying without any issues and it goes ahead and updates the last updated with the current timestamp and a message. So now let's see how we can test this using some of the tools or cheat codes in Foundry's toolbox. Here I have an empty test and I've imported our hello contract and instantiated it in our setup function. Now the Foundry cheat codes are actually a special contract deployed to the test blockchain that is created when you're running your tests. This contract does a bunch of funky magic and therefore won't work on an actual live blockchain. But it does make our testing easier when we're running it locally. To use the cheat code functions in this contract, you first need to define an interface and then define the functions you're going to use during your testing. Here I've defined an interface VM and I've defined a function called warp, prank, and deal. The first function warp allows you to basically move forward in time to a specified timestamp. This is useful for testing contracts with time locks. Frank tells the test runner to run the next transaction as a specific address. So using Frank, you can imitate different addresses to test specific scenarios. And finally, Deal allows you to give any Ethereum address an arbitrary ether balance. Now that we have our interface set, we need to instantiate the VM contract. We can do this just by creating a local variable and instantiating this contract at this specific address, which is listed in the documentation. To make sure testing is working, let's just run a simple deployment. Over in our terminal, we can run forge test and our test passes. Now let's test that we can set a brand new message. This test should pass because it runs the transaction as the same address that deployed our hello contract in the setup. In our terminal, we can run forge test again and that test passes. Now the fun part, let's use our first cheat code. The first one we'll use is prank. And this is how we will test the contract running from another address. To do this, we call vm.prank and then pass an address. In this case, I pass the number one and cast it to an address. Essentially, we are passing 0x, a bunch of zeros, and the number one as an address. And then we attempt to set a new message and this should fail because we are using an address that is not the owner. Remember that when using Foundry and Forge, adding fail after the word test in your function name means that we want the transaction to fail. And if the transaction fails, the test itself actually passes. Let's run Forge test and the test passes. Now let's test to see if our contract will allow us to set a message even before a day has passed. 
Remember, in our contract, we put a guard saying that unless a day has passed since you have updated the message, it should not allow you to update the message again. So to start, we want to create a test to test whether or not our transaction fails. On the first line, I use the warp function to fast forward one day because when we're running our tests in Foundry, the timestamp automatically starts at zero as if it was the very beginning of time itself, which of course is not the case and will never be the case when you're deploying new smart contracts. So the timestamp will actually be some large number but in our test environment, time starts from the very beginning of time. So I've added a day to pretend that some time has actually passed since deploying our contract. Next, we set one message, which should be fine, and then try to set another message. But because another day hasn't passed since setting this message, this should fail. Let's run forge test and all tests pass. Remember, we wanted to test that our transaction failed. We didn't want our test to now remember, in our contract, we allow users to bribe the contract, so to speak, if they aren't the owner of the contract. So if you aren't the owner and you want to set a message, you just have to send some ether. Well, in order to send some ether, we have to supply our fake address with some ether. We can do this with the deal cheat code. In order to do this, we call vm.deal, the address we want to send the ether to, and then the amount of ether. In this case, I sent 100 ether, we're not going to use it all. I just did it so you can see that you can send any amount of ether you want. Next, we call vm.prank. Remember, this impersonates the specific address you pass in, in this case, address one. And then we run hello.set message and pass a value of one ether and the message we want to set. And because we're sending ether, this should pass. And the new message we receive when calling hello.message is the message we just sent. Let's run forge test and all tests pass. And that's it. That's just a handful of the cheat codes provided by Foundry. There's a whole bunch more that I didn't cover in this video. If you'd like to check them out for yourself, make sure to check out the documentation provided on the Foundry GitHub page. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.